another week and another best farm this week video this is a brand new series here on the channel giving you the heads up on where you need to focus your time each and every week now with lightfall launching on the 28th of february the next couple of weeks are critical to make sure we have the best weapons and armor week nine of season of the Serith is absolutely stacked but with that being said there's absolutely one farm you want to make sure you're doing before the end of the current week now, just a few weeks ago, Bungie gave us the heads up on some of the changes coming to build crafting. And with that in mind, there are some fundamental changes coming to mods and how we apply them to our armor. Now, when Lightfall launches, the mod energy type will be removed, eliminating the need for four different versions of a given armor piece for build crafting. On top of that, armor mods that previously provided benefits to weapons based on their archetype will now instead provide benefits to weapons based on their damage type. This helps to completely level the playing field for all weapons and allow us to put powerful suites of mods together to benefit multiple weapons in our loadout that share the same damage type. As for artifact mods, these will now translate to unlockable perks, so we'll no longer need to socket them into our armor. They'll instead provide passive benefits as we unlock them. But a key change and one we're focusing on today is to do with artifice armor. Artifice armor has an extra mod socket, which is currently for combat mods. But starting in Lightfall, Artifice Armor will have a new unique mod socket that grants three additional points to your character's stats. And this includes Strength, Mobility, Intellect, Recovery, Resilience and Discipline. And this will help you round out your stats and perfect all your armor and builds. Now currently the only source of Artifice Armor in Destiny 2 is via the Grasp of Avarice Dungeon. This launched alongside the 30th Anniversary Pack and armor pieces will drop from the first, second and final encounter in this dungeon. Now if you're looking to farm an entire set though, then the final encounter is definitely the best farm this week. This is largely due to the Grasp being the featured dungeon this week, meaning that we can repeat it over and over again and get loot each and every time. Now, before beginning your chase on Artifice Armor, there's a few things to remember. Artifice Armor is only available from the Master difficulty, and the final encounter in this dungeon is 1610 in power. So you'll definitely want to make sure that you've earned the power cap for this season on top of some artifact power levels to boost your power and strength. Now, as well as making sure you're up to power, you'll want to make sure that you equip the relevant mods over on your ghost to help you focus your stats on where you want them on your armor when they drop. If you're looking for high resilience rolls, then make sure to equip those mods to ensure at least a guaranteed 10 stat in that particular column. Now, if you find yourself up to power and you've got the mods equipped on your ghost, what's the best loadouts and classes to run the final encounter? Well, in the footage that you see here, we ran two Well Warlocks and one Thundercrash Titan, but you can most definitely get away with just the one Well of Radiance and having two Thundercrash Titans instead. That will allow for higher burst damage and get you much closer to that one phase, which will help reduce the time you need to invest to get the armor set that you need. Now, when it comes to weapon loadouts, there's a few weapons that I would recommend. The Wither Horde is a fantastic option in your kinetic slot as an energy weapon, as this will effectively allow you to apply Weakened and Clear, which is a debuff from this season's artifact, which will help increase all your fire team's damage. And if you have the Catalyst as well, then this weapon will reload automatically when switching to a heavy weapon to deal damage. It will allow you to effectively reapply that debuff over and over again without requiring you to reload. Another alternative is the Arbalist. In the final encounter here, there are three barrier champions. The Arbalist is one of the best anti-barrier weapons, but as a linear fusion rifle, it's also excellent for damage too. So it has good versatility in this fight and would be an absolutely solid choice. Now, when it comes to heavy weapons, there's quite a few choices. You could definitely get away with rocket launchers, which are very strong for DPS this season. Things like Bump in the Night, for example, and you can craft the perfect roll, which we covered in a video last week. If you haven't checked that video out, make sure to do so, and I'll leave the link to that down in the video description below. But alongside that, linear fusion rifles are still quite good this season. The Taipan 4FR is incredibly strong and easily obtainable for pretty much any Guardian. The Cataclysmic from the Vow of the Disciple Raid is a worthy contender too. This is a really strong option with the bait and switch perk available, but one not to forget about is the Sleeper Simulant. If you have the Catalyst for this weapon as well, you have deeper ammo reserves and a super fast reload. Now, as for armor mods, there's a few that I want to highlight. There's a mod on your seasonal artifact that helps improve the effectiveness of the Vice Stringer Origin trait. If you're going to be running the Taipan 4FR or any Vice SMG, 
then this mod is an absolute must as it will proc this origin trait more often, meaning that you don't have to reload as often too. In the middle of a damage phase that's absolutely critical and could be a difference between a one or two phase. When it comes to your chest piece though, I do recommend rallying the flag with two linear fusion rifle ammo reserves on your chest. Naturally, if you're running a rocket launcher, then switch those out for rocket launcher ammo reserves. Now, once you've rallied, you can change these mods if you need to, but by rallying with two ensures you have the maximum ammo capacity possible. There's nothing worse than running out of ammo during a damage phase, and this helps to alleviate that problem. As for your class item, Weakened and Clear is an absolute must if you're running any grenade launcher. You can apply this to the boss and any other majors in the encounter. And some of these are very tanky, especially on the master difficulty. So any debuff will help you and your fire team. Alongside that, I've got Lucent Finisher, which again is a nice to have option. Because if you do find yourself running out of heavy ammo, if you're going through multiple phases, then by finishing the champions that spawn after each round, you'll be able to get some of that heavy ammo back. Just make sure not to finish the champion right next to the edge. There's nothing worse than your heavy ammo falling into the water, which sadly is an instant kill barrier for us guardians. Now, before you kick off the encounter, you want to rally the flag to ensure maximum ammo and full abilities. Now, you can push up right to the stairs where a shank and vandal spawn. These are both majors. Now, the vandal will drop up to 15 engrams, which you'll need to place in the middle before all separating to a side. Now, one member of your fire team will need to own the vandal that has the torch cannon, as you'll need to take this torch cannon to fire one of three generators to drop additional engrams. Whenever you pick up an engram, this will grant you Burden of Riches. And this has a timer that every time you pick up an additional engram, this timer resets. Now to activate the damage phase, you'll need up to 60 Burden of Riches in total across all three members of your fire team. So each fire team member will need to pick up at least 20 engrams. With that in mind, whoever is owning a torch cannon will need to shoot at least two generators. Now you can fire at these multiple times or hold and charge them instead as the torch cannon has limited rounds. Now each time the generator is activated, it will drop 10 engrams on each side. But shortly before that, barrier champions will spawn in each side too. So before the generator is activated, make sure to take out these champions first. And if you have Lucent Finisher equipped, make sure to finish them if you need that extra heavy ammo. Now, once you have 60 Burden of Riches between you, you can all head to the middle, protect yourself in rifts or behind Titan barricades and hand in all 60 Endgrams. Now, once these have been accepted, this will trigger the DPS phase and the boss should spawn up in the middle of the stairs. Once there, it's now time to do as much damage as possible. Place down that well apply weakened and clear, smash the boss with the caress of the falling star thunder crashes and go absolutely ham with any rockets or linear fusion rifles. With a very drilled team, it is possible to one phase this boss, but most teams will need two phases. With that being said though, two phases will still take you roughly around two and a half to three minutes. And as we're on the master difficulty, if any armor drops, this will be guaranteed to be artifice armor. So if you're looking to jump into Lightfall with some of the best armor available in the game, take advantage of that extra mod socket and boost your armor stats. Then make sure to jump into the Grasp of Avarice this week and farm that final boss checkpoint to get your hands on it. So there we have it guys, a good look on what is probably the best farm this week in Destiny 2. If you've enjoyed this video, be sure to check out one of the two videos you see here in these cards for more Destiny 2 content. And if you want to keep up to date with everything to do with Destiny 2, then be sure to hit subscribe as well. I'm going to jump back into the game as always guys, and I will catch you all again very soon.